We are staying in Kaduna State, where terrorists have carried out attacks on different fronts during the week, with the latest being the invasion of another community in Chikondoku government area of the state by rampaging terrorists who killed two persons, injured others, and kidnapped an unspecified number. Community members told TVC News that the terrorists came in large numbers, shooting sporadically before invading the area. Lupe Asom reports. Another brazen attack by terrorists in Kaduna, the fifth in five days. This time, the assailants attacked a community in Chukun local government area, and about 15 houses were invaded. Several persons were kidnapped, including the pastor and a retired police officer. Others who were shot have been confirmed dead. You get to know two people are killed for now. About uh, four of them are in the hospital receiving treatment. Because for now, for now, the numbers we can be able to gather, they are about 15 years about. The attack comes four days after terrorists bombed the Kaduna-bound train, killing eight persons and kidnapping others. Residents of the community expressed disappointment at the inability of the government to stem the surge of killings and kidnappings. Christians are dying. Muslims are dying. Let Buhari come and say something about the killing in Kaduna State. It had to stop. Government are no longer trying to us. So what we need in this area is self-defense. If the government can be able to recruit like hunter youth, even without paying us, at least as a voluntary soldiers, they should give up and we are going to face these people. Meanwhile, the governor is set to brief the president on the recent happenings in the state. But he's also calling for extreme actions against the bandits. He feels there is no better time to bomb terrorists out of existence. And the problems of banditry and terrorism in the Northwest far outweigh what we are seeing or we have seen ever in the Northeast. And it is time for the Nigeria Air Force and the Army to bomb these terrorists out of existence. With the declaration by the Federal High Court that these bandits are terrorists, nothing stops the military, the police and other security agencies to take an extreme action to terminate these bandits without prejudice. We apologize inability to protect everyone. The governor has also promised to ask the president to deploy more security personnel and equipment into the state. Lupe Asom, TVC News, Kaduna. Still in Kaduna, multiple sources, including the Vigilante Group of Nigeria, say the Kaduna train attack could have been prevented if proactive measures had been taken by security forces. Commandant General of the Volunteer Security Group says they had gotten wind of the planned attack, but collaborative efforts with security forces to scuttle it were limited. Defense correspondent Sifo Nizien reports. It's days after the terror attack on the Kaduna-bound train resulting in the death of at least eight persons and more than 40 wounded. The search is on for the passengers unaccounted for, most of whom are believed to have been kidnapped by the assailants. This is coming amid allegations of ticket racketeering, which the management of the railway company has dismissed. Beyond this, it has also emerged that prior to the Monday attack, security forces had gotten wind that terror groups were planning an offensive on the railway. The leader of this volunteer group says its operatives also got heads up of the impending attack. Yeah, we saw it coming because we have our people around. All this community from Abuja down to that place, all those villages, we have our people. But the problem we're having is, uh, this is not the first time that it happens. This is the second time. And that second time that it happens, uh, after small talk from here and there, everybody just relaxed. Knowing fully well that these people are prepared and are ready for this uh, 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 rail uh, uh, to temper with the rail line and even to bomb it. Multiple sources in the security services say the attack could have been prevented if security forces had collaborated more effectively. So you can see what happened. That that it, that initial uh, what do you call it uh, something they have done should tell us that. They are ready and they will still come back. Even now, there are growing concerns of more terror attacks in the region. The military authorities are scaling up operations just as airstrikes have killed dozens of terrorists in locations a few kilometers from the scene of the train attack. For this group, grassroots policing remains the best option. 
for volunteer organizations like this, these security challenges are daunting but surmountable, acquiring a grassroots approach. Sifon Isien, TVC News, Abuja. In the meantime, the Nigerian army is seeking cooperation of traditional rulers in tackling security challenges affecting the country. The commander of 32 Artillery Brigade of the Nigerian Army, Akore, Brigadier General Muktara Adamo, who spoke at the Palace of the Olawo for War, said the military will continue to protect the territorial integrity of the country. Ayodeji Moradio reports. Nigeria has witnessed serious security challenges in the past few days. The attack of a passenger train along Abuja Kaduna where many were killed and several others injured, brought to the fore the lapses in Nigeria's security apparatus. In Ondo State, the commander of 32 Artillery Brigade of the Nigeria Army, Akure Brigadier General Mukta Adamu, who was recently posted to the state, is moving around to seek cooperation of the people in tackling criminality in the state. He is at the palace of the Olowo of Owo or Bajiba de Ogunye, to tell the monarch about the need for traditional rulers to be partners in progress with the army. The brigade commander believes that traditional rulers have an important role to play in the scheme of things. They are enjoying their stay here. There is no much problem. So I come here to appreciate you for all the support and, um, and encouragement and you are giving to our troops and also to seek your own royal blessing so that together we shall all um, synergize and make Owo, Ondo State and indeed our dear country, Nigeria, very safe and secure. I think the Nigerian army has understood... The Olowo wants better synergy among security agencies. This is believes will go a long way in tackling security challenges in the country. Uh, the need for security is very paramount. That will work hand in hand. Uh, I believe that having passed through the army over the years and attaining the, 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 the post of brigadier general. It's not an easy task. Uh, I know you have passed through the fiery furnace to be so prepared for the task ahead. So ours is just to continually uh, wish you well and to cooperate with you. This visit by the commander of 32 Artillery Brigade we go a long way in restoring the confidence of the civilian population in the army. Ayodeji Moradeyo, TVC News. Staying in Ondo, the State Police Command has launched an investigation into the alleged attack of the Chairman of the State House of Assemblies Committee on Information, Giga Moli. Spokesperson of the command, Fumi Odolami, said those behind the attack would be exposed. Mr. Molly was allegedly attacked on Thursday by some hoodlums in the heart of Akure while driving in the evening. Before the incident, the lawmaker said he had received anonymous calls threatening to deal with him. He also said he was able to escape the assassination attempt through the grace of God. After 8 p.m. last night, I was driving towards Oyemekun Road just after the pedestrian bridge at uh, Obadeshida Road. I just heard gunshots, three gunshots, simultaneously. So I was, I was choked, but at the same time, I was alert. So thank God there was no traffic. I just sped off. I was, I didn't, you know, something that happened just suddenly like that. And I just sped off. I, I sped off like two kilometers before I now parked. And the station and lodged a complaint that while he was on his way to Kutele Mila Estate, he had a bank close to the driver's side of his door and the screen was shattered. Yes, he had made his complaint and the police are started investigating. So I just want to urge our people to just relax, let the police investigate and get to the root of the matter. Like I said, the police are started investigating. Of course, he will give us information to help with the investigation, but we don't want us to just jump into conclusion concerning anything until we are through with the investigation. In Sakwato, the State Police Command has paraded three suspected criminals, including a housewife who kidnapped a three-year-old boy of a neighbor at Gida Madi in Tangaza local government area. 
While parading the suspect, the state public relations officer, Sanusi Abubakar, said the suspect was arrested when she came to pick up the two millionaire ransom she demanded from the father of the child. He said the suspect revealed she learned the act of kidnapping through listening to radio programs where stories of how people are being kidnapped were narrated. Also paraded with two suspects arrested for burgling a department at the state-owned specialist hospital and carted away valuables, including four air conditioners. Police say all the suspects will be charged to court at the conclusion of investigation. His three-year-old child named Muhammad Naziru was reported missing. Later at about 22-20 hours of the same date, he received a call from a known person with a hidden number informing him that his son was kidnapped by him. Therefore, he should bring the sum of two million naira as ransom. Otherwise, he will kill the victim. Upon investigation, one Farida Usman F. of the same address was arrested by a team of CID operatives in conjunction with detectives attached to Gidam Madi in an attempt to receive the ransom money, where she confessed to have kidnapped the victim on 30th March 2022 at about 10.00 hours and took him to Tangaza town and deceitfully kept him under the custody of her cousin sister. Members of the National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, Nupeng, have picketed the office of all giant Chevron in the Lekki area of Lagos. In this report, TVC News senior correspondent Sharon Jason tells us why that happened. These are members of the National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, Nupeng. They are protesting against the questionable deaths of one of its members, Babalola Oladimeji, who was a staff of Sebmedio General Services, a contractor to Chevron. Oladimeji, who was a contract staff of the company for more than 15 years, according to his colleagues, died mysteriously in active service. He has worked all his life diligently for the growth of this great company. He was attached to the airport and he was lodged at Genesis Hotel, Ikeja on the 15th of December. On the 20th of December, his colleagues that they locked them together at that hotel was looking for him in the morning to go on his various duties. They couldn't find him in his room. Wife and children of Babalola Oladimeji said three months after their father's death, they have not been allowed to see his body. They are not happy that investigations have not taken place and their father's body is yet to be buried. We want justice because they, they said they, they met inside the swimming pool and he does not swim. My dad does not swim. And again, play the, the, the hotel could not play the CCTV camera. Definitely he was murdered at the hotel. And even the hotel, they could not even close down the hotel or investigate. They did not investigate ever since then. He just kept quiet like he's, he's an animal. The chairman of Lagos Zone of Nupeng, Tayo Aboyeji, insists that Chevron must ensure that workers have collective bargaining agreement. We have been to the Federal Ministry of Labor more than seven times, and they pronounce and know that they should go and meet us and give these people a good uh, 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 welfare package. But when, it, when we get to Lagos, Chevron and Supermedia said, no, Ministry of, uh, Ministry of Labor are just seen their own. Now they have sent a list of people that will retire this April. And the question is, if they retire, what is their benefit? I took time to get reactions from the management of Chevron, but they declined to respond. Sharon Jason, TVC News. The Court of Appeal sitting in Enugu has upheld the decision of the Abakaleke High Court bordering on the defection of Ibon State Governor David Omahi and his deputy Kelechi Igwe from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress. The lead judge, Justice Alpha Belgore, held that the appeal filed by the candidates of the APC in the 2019 governorship election, Senator Sonny Ogwoji, lacked merit and that the cases cited are totally irrelevant to the matter brought before the court. 
Justice Belgore further pointed out that the removal of Governor Omahi and his deputy lies in the hands of the legislature and must be in line with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. While citing Section 308 of the Constitution, the judge pointed out that no legal action can be taken against a certain president and vice president, as well as a certain governor and his deputy. He therefore dismissed the appeal with a 200,000 naira fine against the appellant. In Lagos, over 150 million naira grant has been given to 567 leaders in the state. The gesture is from a federal lawmaker representing Ikeja Federal Constituency, who says the aim is to help provide viable economic sustainability tools and improve businesses. Inyolua Kukwola has the report. An online business newspaper, Trading Economics, reveals Nigeria is ranked 131 among 190 countries and the ease of doing business. This report shows a lot has to be done in making the operation of businesses a lot easier and faster. That's why at this event, leaders of the All Progressives Congress in the Ikeja Federal Constituency are benefiting from a grant to improve businesses and aid self-employment. The major challenge most businesses die in Nigeria is due to poor power supply and this constituent were educated on the proper use of electricity in boosting their businesses. Every year, many people are injured in and around their homes due to unsafe conditions such as overloaded circuits and damaged installations as well as misuse of extension cords and electrical products which can also create fire hazards and uh, also result to electrocution. The House of Rep member who distributed the grant to his constituents in Ikeja, Onibongo, and Utudu local government areas of Lagos State believes this program will help reduce poverty. There will be progress within their families. Uh, they are able to empower themselves. They will, be, they will be less dependent on government or individuals for assistance. They can take care of their immediate needs. Uh, and I believe that uh, the, even the GDP of that community will also, will also improve. The visibly excited beneficiaries promise to use this fund efficiently for their businesses. This will ameliorate and it will go a long way in helping all the individuals that are going to benefit from today's grant. Most especially in their area of businesses. I imagine a lot of us are going to put this into our respective business to make good use of it. It has impacted me a lot because this money I collected today, it will help my business to grow up more. With the many issues plaguing Nigeria, many say acts like this would help to alleviate unemployment and boost the country's GDP. In New Lua, Kokola, TVC News, Lagos. The federal government says the construction of road networks across the country will improve commerce and facilitate economic growth and development. The Southwest Director of Highways, Federal Ministry of Works, made this known while carrying out an on-the-spot assessment of the ongoing construction of the badon ife Ilisha Road. Olaide Oyewole reports. The 180 kilometers badon ife Ilisha Dual Carriage Road was awarded by the federal government in 2020. The construction of the project, which was initially stalled due to the outbreak of COVID-19, is now currently undergoing complete rehabilitation from a war road area of Ibadan. While inspecting the multi-billion Naira project, the Zonal Director of Highways, Federal Ministry of Works, believes that the road which links other parts of Southwest would boost economy within the region. And then of course, we expect, you know, our people spend so much maintaining their vehicles. So once you have a good ride, cost of maintenance will also go down. And uh, people can at least, then there will be a lot of uh, activity. Commerce will be improved, movement between the north and the south. Everything is realistic uh, and everything is achievable as long as the funding is properly done. We are fully mobilized. We are working in two big locations as of now. Uh, 
so there will be no problem and uh, we have just started the, the job and you can see that the progress is already fast so there will be no problem if the proper funding is done also inspected by the government officials was the Oyo Bomoshoi Lorin Road that has now reached 50% completion. Yes, all the motorists should please exercise caution. In any construction zone, there is this construction zone speed limit that the FRSC has uh, uh, put in place. So, and whenever you are going through construction area, please be, be cautious that this is the, the, the workers are, are, are on the road. Everything is in our end and uh, we are pushing daily to achieve our target uh, and we want to finish the project in time and uh, by the grace of God we are going to finish it in time. The Oyo Gomosho Learning Road is a linking path between the southwest and the north. When finally completed, it will improve the interaction between both regions as well as reduce the time traveling limits of commuters plying that road. Oladio Yewole, TBC News, Oyo. The political atmosphere in Ekiti is taking a different shape at the moment. This is coming at a time the window for campaign ahead of the governorship election slated for the 10th of June is open. But what is changing is that the youth are now challenging the status quo and making straight jacket demands from those aspiring to take the number one job in the state. Ayomidia Jaywe reports. It's that time again when politicians seeking elective positions will be soliciting for votes from the people. Some will stage solidarity campaigns, others will organize stand all meetings just to woo the electorate. One thing that has become very glaring in it is the fact that youth are coming out to make their voices heard, seeking elective positions and they are making straight jacket demands. We want industries, sustainable ones, not just industry that will probably last for four years and after the four years. And thank God, APC is the governor there. And if we are having the next governor to be APC, it's going to be continuity. That's why we have money for continuity, so that we can be able to have more of this good thing that is happening now. But we need more. And when I said more, industry that can employ and empower our youth. Not because of not too young to run alone, but because we know that we have the capacity to run. That is the reason why the youth are coming not powerful this time around to, make, to uh, maximize the opportunity. From one party to another, the message is the same. They're tired of being used as political thugs because they have something to offer, as they seek better life for themselves. As you can see, we have graduates on the streets, riding bikes, uh, doing uh, um, uh, public transport, and these are brilliant people. They went to school to become a lawyer, to become a doctor and everything. But the current government or, and the previous, they are not encouraging them to become somebody alive. And we are here to change all of those stories. We are here to encourage the youth. We are here to, to show them that you can do it. You can. They say all politics is local. And if the grassroots are not well informed and involved, there will be no sustainable governance at the center. This political aspirant wants INEC to help with the collection of PBC so that every eligible voter from all locality in Nikiti will not be disenfranchised. People, most of the people in Nikiti say they are lottery. They have not yet collected the PBC or registered to be a voter. So, and then we have make our grievances you known to the INEC authority. I know they're going to do the best. What every aspirant says is that we want to serve the people, but over time the people turns out to be the servant. The youth are hoping that the current political wind will be favorable to Hall and Sundry. Ayomedia J B T V C News, Adwegiti. Organizers have announced the opening of registration for the 2022 edition of the IA Institutions Football League. More than 60 public and private universities are scheduled to take part in this year's tournament, which is organized by Pay Sports and the Nigeria University Games Association, NUGA. TVC Sports correspondent Solomon Ajiziogo has more details. Less than a week after the Nigeria University Games, NUGA, students are preparing to return to the field for the 2022 edition of the High Institutions Football League, High FL. 
like Nuga, which ended last Saturday with the highest number of participating universities. More institutions are registering to play in the fifth edition of the higher fell. We are commencing registration in April and hopefully kicking off in May up towards November. From 54 teams from last year, 61 public and private universities will be taking part in this year's tournament spread across the country. You have the group stages, which is going to be in five locations. Then you have the round of 16, which is going to take place in 16 schools across Nigeria. Then you have the quarterfinals and the semifinals. Despite the challenges in the northeast of the country, the University of Meiduguri Unimate emerged the 2021 champions after defeating Badekmule Ajashi University at Kumba. And the trophy is up. University of Meiduguri were the champions. The last edition of 2018 and 2019 champions were not able to make it in 2021 league that we have. That shows that the level of commitment from the universities and the performance of those universities and the challenges they are having in high effort has shown that we have true champions. The 2022 high effort will begin in May with zonal preliminaries and run till November with a Super 4 tournament in Lagos. Uh, by the end, we should be having our round of 16 teams. We have our Super 4 teams from last year and then we'll have 12 teams coming from the group stages. So we kick off the round of 16, which will play between June and July, uh, subsequently the quarterfinals and the semifinals. Lauren Uni Lauren are the Nuga football winners after defeating Obafemi Aulawa University 5-4 on penalty. Standing at all, and they go get lost! And that is it! University of Ilori! Uni Loring and Unimade will get the opportunity to settle over the bragging rights to produce the Nigerian University Football Champions. Salomon Ajiziogu, TVC News, Lagos. Turn attention outside Nigeria as the war between Russia and Ukraine enters its second month. Russia is accusing Ukrainian helicopters of attacking an old depot in Belgorod, Russian territory. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says the alleged strikes do not create comfortable conditions for peace talks. Ukrainian officials have not confirmed the attacks, but video has emerged showing fuel tanks on fire. In the meantime, the Red Cross says top-level Ukrainian and Russian authorities have approved a plan for further evacuations from Mariupol. This trip to Mariupol has been described as desperately important by the Red Cross, with tens of thousands of people still trapped inside the city that has seen relentless bombardment by Russian troops. Meanwhile, President Vladimir Putin has signed a decree on new procedures for paying for Russian gas with quote unfriendly countries in rubles starting April 1. <laughs> Today, I have signed a decree that establishes the rules of trading Russian natural gas with so-called unfriendly states. We offer counterparties from such countries a clear and transparent scheme. To purchase Russian natural gas, they must obey rubble accounts in Russian banks. In the U.S., President Joe Biden has announced several initiatives to try and lower the price of gas. Well, I banned the Russian import of oil here in America. Republicans and Democrats in Congress called for it and supported it. It was the right thing to do. But I said at the time, it's going to come with a cost. Still in the U.S., Pentagon spokesperson John Kirby spoke with newsmen and during the briefing he was asked about reports coming out of Russia. That they had already been in a defensive posture before they began to reposition. Um, uh, and uh, as far as we can tell, the forces that remain around Kyiv are still largely in defensive positions. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has thanked the Netherlands when speaking to members of parliament during a video link for the support already given to you. The Second World War must never happen again, but everything is repeating itself. World War II started with an attack on a few...